Question one then, the first question in paper two of the 2018 SQA Higher Maths. Four marks for area under a curve. I'm not shaded in here. This diagram shows this curve with this equation, three plus two X minus X squared. So that's that upside down parabola. And you have to calculate the area enclosed by the X axis in the curve. And it's giving you the points of intersection. So you don't need to factorize that to find them. Well, the area. The area will be the sum of, remember the way you find the area is you're splitting it into lots of little thin rectangles. And the areas of each of these rectangles will be the height of the rectangle times a tiny bit of the width. You divide this x up into lots of little bits. So each bit is just a little tiny bit of x. And that's what you add up. And the height, of course, is given by this. So it's 3 plus 2x minus x squared for the height of the bar times dx for the width. Now you have to put in the dx. Now there's a mark for the first bit, but there's two conditions that have to be applied to get that mark. You have to put in the dx and you'll have to say where you start and where you finish for each of these bars. So it's starting at negative one and finishing at three. You have to put in the limits. All of this has to be down for the first mark. Now the second part is to integrate it. Don't differentiate it. So the three is going to go up to three X. Remember it's add one to the power, it's the opposite of differentiate. That X is going to go up to X squared and then it'll be divided by two. I'll just put it, I, don't, I would normally just have done that in my head, it doesn't matter. And that power two is going to go up to power three, but then it's divided by three. Now you could put in a plus C, that would be wrong. You're not going to be penalised for that. But it'll make no difference because you know you're going to evaluate it twice and subtract the two answers. So if you did have a plus C, when you worked it out again with the other plus C and subtracted them, they would just cancel out. So integrate it, and then you're going to evaluate it. But integrating it gets a mark. Now, substitute in the limits. Remember to get rid of your integral sign once you've done the integration. Though I notice it says don't penalise the continuation of the integral in this part. But strictly speaking, that's wrong because you've done your integration. If you put an integral sign in here, that implies you're going to integrate it a second time. And you're not. Now, put in the limits. So that's going to be 3 times 3. Now that's just 1. So that's just 3 squared minus, I'm going to put it this way, a third of three cubed, minus, now you put in negative ones, three times negative one, plus, and of course they cancel, that's just a negative one squared, minus a third of negative one cubed. It's a bit tedious, but you're getting a mark for doing that. You're getting a mark for just putting the numbers in. Evaluate it at three and evaluate it at negative one, and of course those two answers have been subtracted. The last mark's just for the answer, but you could just type that all into your calculator. There's not a lot to these anyway, if I just put them all down in a big bundle. So that's going to be a 9. That's also a 9. That's also a 9, because you're looking at one of those factors. But subtract 9. That's going to be take away negative there. You can do that with subtract, but I'll just do this. That's going to be a, a plus 3. That's a positive 1, so it's going to be minus a 1. That's a positive, but it's just going to be a third because that only comes to one, but I'm subtracting it, so it's minus a third. That's a third's a pest, but it's easy to take a third off of something. So altogether you've got, those nines get knocked out, so that makes 12, that drops it down to 11, and that finally drops it down to 10, leaving you with two thirds. So you could either write it that way, units squared, or you could say that's 32 upon three units squared. Either way around, there's the last mark.